All right, for this video, I want to go through a sample BOI report, which is an informational return that's filed with FinCEN to report beneficial ownership information on domestic and foreign reporting companies. So these filings came into play because of the Corporate Transparency Act. And so we're going to look at a sample return here for an S corporation that was set up in 2022. So we've got the sample return here. We'll go through all the pages. We've also got the BOI small compliance guide uh, provided by FinCEN. And we have a copy of the 2023 tax return, the 1120S for our S corporation. We've also got the FinCEN website up here for reference. And then lastly, I've got just two slides, one covering some ba basic details on the CTA uh, and what is a reporting company. And then the second slide are the fact pattern details for our S corporation that was set up pre 2024. So if we start with the CTA basics, the uh, Corporate Transparency Act is the act that requires this filing information and the filing deadlines for your company depend on when your entity was created. So for entities that were set up before January 1, 2024, the BOI report is due before January 1, 2025. So you have all of 2024 to get the return submitted. Now, if you have an entity set up during 2024, the report is due within 90 calendar days after receiving notice that the entity was created. If you set up an entity in 2025 or at a later year, the BOI is due within 30 days of receiving notice when the entity was created. So uh, the deadline to get these things submitted uh, drops from year to year. Now the BOI report uh, is not an annual filing. So you don't have to submit this thing every year. Once you submit it, you're pretty much done until at a later date, if there's a change in beneficial ownership, then you have to file an updated report. But if there's no changes, you don't have to keep submitting the filing. Now, what's a reporting company? Well, they're, they're categorized into either domestic or foreign reporting companies. A domestic reporting company is any entity that was set up uh, by filing a document with the Secretary of State or similar office. So, for example, if you want to set up an LLC and you file the Articles of Organization with the state of Florida, well, you're filing a document with the Secretary of State, so that's going to make that entity a reporting company. Now, there are some entities that are exempt from the reporting company definition. And so there's a list of 23 different types of organizations which are exempt. And so we have a, if we have a quick look at that list here, we can see that there's a list of 23 exemptions. Now, most of the entity types that are on this list are exempt because they're already subject to pretty onerous uh, regulations and disclosure requirements uh, regarding the beneficial owners and controlling persons. And so they didn't want to kind of double up on the reporting. Uh, but one such exception that might apply to a lot of companies is the large operating company exemption. So if we have a look at the uh, large operating company exemption, which is exemption number 21, let me scroll down to that on the list here. So large operating company is any that qualifies if it meets all six of these criteria. So basically the company has to employ more than 20 full-time employees. These are employees based in the United States. The company has an operating presence at a physical office in the United States. Uh, the entity filed a federal income tax return where the previous year they had more than five million in gross receipts or sales, right? And so uh, what they're trying to get at here is, okay, if you're a big enough organization, the likelihood that these are just uh, companies that are being set up you know, for uh, tax evasion or to try to hide and conceal assets, uh, those risks are low. And so for that reason, we're going to exempt you from these uh, reporting obligations. Now, what's reported on these returns? So we report company applicant information and beneficial owner information. So company applicants are the persons, the individuals who actually file the document to create the company. And the maximum number of persons you would report in this category is two. Now, what's important is you do not have to file company applicant information if the entity was created before January 1, 2024. 
It's only for the new Leaf Forum entities after that date that have to provide this information. Now, beneficial owner information is an individual who exercises substantial control over the company, or it's an individual who owns or controls at least 25% ownership in the reporting entity. Now, when we talk about substantial control, if we go back to the BOI instructions, substantial control is quite a vague term. So this is uh, all individuals who exercise substantial control. There is no limit to the number of individuals who could be reported for exercising substantial control over the company. Uh, so there are a couple of persons that are just kind of de facto substantial control persons. So these are senior officers like a president, CFO, general counsel, CEO, COO. So any kind of C-suite title. Uh, you also have these catch-alls down here, so any important decision maker. Uh, so you need to really carefully review uh, what, is, what is the hierarchy within your organization and do you have all those persons that have substantial control reported on the return. Now let's have a look at the fact pattern and then we'll get into the filing itself. So in this fact pattern, this is an S corporation that was set up before January 1, 2024. So we have John Smith and Jane Doe opened a landscaping business in 2022. The company is organized as a corporate entity and is taxable as an S corporation for federal tax purposes. John and Jane each own 50% of the stock. The company's organizational documents were filed by their attorney, legal guy, in 2022. Now the company employs four full-time employees and its gross receipts for 2023 were 379,188. John is president and CEO of the company, while Jane is a passive investor and does not actively participate in the business. The company has one other officer, Adam Person, who is the CFO and CAO of the company. Adam does not own any equity in the business. So we know now that we don't qualify for a small company exemption because we're not big enough, right? We don't have enough employees, we don't have enough gross revenue. Uh, and we don't meet any of the other exemptions, right? We're not a bank, we're not a credit union, uh, we're lawn care and landscaping business, so we have to report on these BOIs. Now, John is the beneficial owner, which means he, because he has a 50% ownership in the company and he has a C-suite uh, title, right? He's the CEO and president. Jane is also gonna be a beneficial owner because she owns 50% of the business, right? So 25% or more. Now, Adam Person, the CFO and CAO is also a beneficial owner because he's an officer, right? And so what's um, the language is tricky because beneficial owner kind of makes you think, well, you have to have equity, not the case when it comes to BOI reports, right? If you're a president, CEO, CAO, whatever the title might be, you can likely be a beneficial owner even though you don't own any of the company. All right, now the company, uh, the company applicant uh, legal guy doesn't have to be disclosed because this entity was formed prior to January 1, 2024. So let's have a look at the uh, forms here. So we've got the BOI report. Now this is the PDF version. So you can do this uh, one of two ways. If you go to the website and you're in the BOI e-filing uh, page, you can file this online completely, so you can uh, go through the, the web browser to just all input all this information and submit it, or you can download a PDF, complete the PDF, and then upload it to the FinCEN portal. In our case, that's what we're going to be doing here. We're looking at the PDF document. So once the PDF document is completed, you can validate it, which will make sure everything is properly formatted, and then finalizing it will lock all the fields in uh, so they can't be changed and then you can upload it to the portal. So filing information, this is an initial report. So we've marked initial report. And then on page two, we have the reporting company information. So we have checkbox three to indicate we want to be assigned a FinCEN ID. Uh, so that'll help us you know, file any reports in the future, make any changes. So the reporting company legal name, well, if we have a look, we've got uh, Fake Lawn Care Business Inc. We've got the EIN and we've got the address, all of which needs to be reported on the form. So we've got the name, company EIN, the jurisdiction where it was formed is in the US and in Florida specifically. 
We've got the current US address here in St. Petersburg, so that's all entered. And then in part three, where we have company applicant information, we have checked the box on line 16, reporting company was created or registered before Jan 1, 2024. And so what that'll do is it will gray out all these fields for the company applicant because we don't have to report that information because it is a pre-Jan 1, 2024 entity formation. Now the beneficial owner information, uh, the whole document comes in just four pages. And then so each beneficial owner gets their own page. And if you have more than one beneficial owner, you can hit the uh, X to add an additional page. So we've got the first beneficial owner reported here, which is John Smith. Now, if the beneficial owner doesn't want to input their information directly here, they can register with FinCEN for a FinCEN ID. And then on the return, you just enter their personalized FinCEN ID. And then that will gray out all these fields here and you don't have to re-input that information. In this case, none of these individuals are already registered. That's what we're gonna assume for this fact pattern. So we're entering everything as is on the return. So we've got uh, John Smith, his date of birth, his residential address, and the form of ID that he's submitting uh, to verify his identity here is his Florida driver's license. So you can attach a driver's license or other state ID, you can attach a passport. He's attaching his state issued driver's license. Uh, and then so we've attached it as a PDF here, John Smith driver's license dot PDF. Uh, the second BOI person is gonna be Jane Doe, right? So she's a beneficial owner because she owns 50% of the company. So we've got Jane Doe's information, her address, and then again, we're attaching a copy of her uh, state issued driver's license as an ID. And then last but not least, we've got Adam Person here. He is the CFO, CAO, he, so he has to be reported as a beneficial owner. And so we've got his name, his date of birth, his address, and then the state issued ID as well. Now what you notice on these filings is that nowhere here do we indicate why this person is a beneficial owner, right? The FinCEN just doesn't care. Uh, so they just want everybody, wh whether you're an owner and you've got 25% or more of equity or you're just a controlling person, so you have substantial control over the company, they just want that information. There's no checkbox that says I'm an equity owner or I'm a CAO or a CFO. None of that information gets filed. So once we have the three um, reports for each of the beneficial owners, we can double check all these details go back up to page one and you would validate and finalize the pdf and then you can visit the fincen uh, the fincen website and go ahead and click on submit boir and it'll give you an opportunity to upload the pdf document that you just completed all right so that covers it for this tutorial hope that was helpful uh, any questions feel free to leave a comment below and as always i appreciate you watching and look forward to seeing you on the next one thank you